you actually wrote a, an article uh, going back, gosh, Pat, a few months now. And, you know, we all like to do a victory lap. I like to talk about when I called out NVIDIA becoming the next trillion dollar company like three plus years ago. And sometimes it's getting things right three or four years back. Sometimes it's getting things right three or four weeks back. But Pat, a couple of months ago, you basically said Joe Biden and the uh, various chip controls he's putting into place simply aren't going to be enough to stop uh, the routing of uh, advanced accelerated computing chips from getting into China. And I think so far, Pat, it's proven to be correct. We knew this going in. We know that most of these kinds of import-export controls rarely work. And that's because unless the world wants to co cooperate, and I mean the whole world wants to cooperate, there's always the two and three and four steps, right? It gets sent first to Italy, and then Italy sends it to Macau. And then Macau says, well, we don't have any rules, so we'll ship it to China. We don't care. And I, by the way, nothing with Italy. I'm not, I'm just randomly using that as an example. But my, my point is, is that, you know, we know that the next big frontier, the next war is going to be fought on the technology front. And while, yes, there are certainly ground wars being fought right now with um, with weapons, we know that also if you've watched uh, Israel's rocket, uh, I don't know what they call it, Pat, but the basically the shield <laughs> that they used, um, this is heavily technology driven, the ability to uh, build these defense systems. And it's you know, machine learning, it's training, it's intelligence, and the advanced semiconductors are going to be key to that particular, uh, you know, front. And of course, there's a technology leadership battle being fought on a global basis right now, right? The country with the strongest AI uh, is going to have the strongest economy, is going to have the strongest growth and productivity, it's going to have, um, you know, the world's admiration. And so we've been at a long time philosophical arms race around technology with China and us sending our most advanced uh, technology and intellectual property over there for them to build and uh, in, iterate and innovate upon is a risk factor for us too. So I'm not talking a lot about the specifics here, Pat, but what, what one thing I will mention is basically companies, Intel, NVIDIA, AMD, we're all looking at building these kind of tuned down AI chips you know, the most notable, the 800 series from NVIDIA. And they were basically designed to get around the chip controls. The chip controls had certain specs. They said, well, we'll build something right up to the edge of the spec and then we'll make it, you know, work. And then what basically the, you know, this new uh, regulation included was, well, we're going to just keep changing the goalpost then. You're going to mail something that's right up to the edge of the goalpost. We'll move the goalposts. Because what we don't want to do is send the technology over to China that they're going to get one way or another and make it easy, easier for them to get and make it easier for the, them to compete both from a, from a national defense and from a technology leadership standpoint. And so I just think, Pat, this is going to be a merry-go-round. It's going to go round and round and round. We'll move the goalposts. They'll continue to get it through gray markets and different channels. We'll continue to try to make it harder through different import-export controls. But in the end, China is fighting to, to keep its, its market and economic leadership as well as its defense leadership. Um, it's not leading the U.S., but it is the second biggest economy and, or the biggest, depending on which metrics you're using for imports and exports. And they don't want to be left behind. And the U.S. has a lot of say in how fast China can move in AI. So here we go again. It keeps rolling. Yeah, listen, I don't want enemies of the United States or potential threats to get any technology that could harm my family. And I, I'm also a realist uh, that says that you actually have to be able to stop something. I remember when I was at AMD, I was in my first year there and we had put a blockade on Iran and some weird picture showed up on USA Today and in the background uh, was a rack of AMD processors that, <laughs> right, uh, that they weren't even supposed to have, right? I got I got first uh, firsthand account of of what you can uh, keep from coming over the border and and what you can't. So, um, how big is an H100, Dan? How how big do you think it is? Oh, you're on mute, but that's okay. No, I'm gonna. I'm going to get to the punchline here. It, it is about the size of a carton of cigarettes. Okay, it's eleven. Uh, it's eleven inches long, um, and um, 
about uh, five inches tall. And I mean, think about how many ways you could bring that into a country, right? You could put thousands of them on a boat and show up on the shore. You could go through airport security uh, and heck, you could put a, uh, uh, you could relabel it. I mean, it, it it's kind of funny for me to think that you can stop this and there is no phone home capability uh, either. Uh, so you could do some sort of a lock where you had to phone home to NVIDIA to get authorization to make this thing work. All you need is drivers. They're sitting right on the NVIDIA website. And before you go to the next step that says, know your customer, we've been through that. There's another article I wrote uh, on, you can find on my website that talks about the insanity of know your customer uh, type, of, type of things and how that doesn't stop anything. So the other element is that although we really don't talk about them, there are a lot of local powerhouses that, that are, are chip makers. One of them is called Beeren. And no, it doesn't have the performance of an H100. Uh, it's close to an A100, though, right? And w what chips do you think that all of these models like uh, OpenAI, GPT-4 were built on? They were built on an A100, not an H100. So I, I think that this is a nice political gesture. Uh, I think in the end... A100s will get through, H100s will get through, uh, border control, A, A B, uh, I think this is going to incent China to build its own uh, ecosystem. And will they be as efficient or performant as an H100? No, they won't because they can't fab them on leading edge. But I think as we saw, what they can do some miracles with lagging edge like they did with the uh, the Huawei chip. And that's it. That's all I got. The insanity. Read, read my two articles. Tell me yeah, you, you, you hit it pretty well there, Pat. And it is insane. And it is going to continue because this isn't something they're just going to relent and be like, oh, we can't ship it. I guess we'll give up. We're, we're out of the AI arms race. You know, it's they're going to find a way. And so it's going to be a, a bit of a cat and mouse game that will continue.